apostle. Happy views. So we began to deal with the subject of soteria, salvation, yesterday, and we established that salvation is a fundamental doctrine of scripture or the heart of the message of the Christ. Because Jesus is God who became a man to save man. The entire context, the entire content of the mission of God becoming a man is to save. Salvation is at the heart of it. And then we began to look at a number of things that has to do with the sovereignty of God. And I will advise you to get the CDs because we began to look at quite a number of things yesterday fundamentally. And then we said, you know, God in Exodus, when Moses was talking about God, they put all of the thoughts together and they arrived at the name of God as Yahweh. Yahweh means God, God will save. And then in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah said, uh, a virgin shall conceive and his name shall be called Emmanuel. When Jesus was born, his name was called Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. So we began to establish that the sovereignty of God, therefore, is explained and seen in salvation. When we say Jesus, we mean Yahweh, or we are saying salvation is of the Lord. And when we say that God is sovereign, what we're talking about, the sovereignty of God, we are talking about the sovereignty of God as revealed in his salvation plan. The book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9, put it up for me. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He is not willing. He is not willing that any soul should perish. Willing. The book of First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? Who will? Willing. Who will? So look at the word will, willing. Now since we have explained that Yahweh is salvation, we have explained that Yahweh is salvation or the sovereignty of God is salvation. Then the word willing therefore is a disposition that influences your action. The willingness of God there is a disposition that influences your action for example in that first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 we see that willingness explained in action first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 put it up for me for there is one god and one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus there is one god and one mediator between god and man the man the man christ jesus so the willingness of God is explained in his action. It's explained in his action. That he himself, God, became a man to build a bridge where God and man can meet. So that God's intent to save man can find expression. So the willingness or the will of God there is a disposition that influences your action. Now... Please take note of this. There are actions between the willingness of God and there is a disposition. Something God is disposed to do. He is not willing, but it doesn't stop in empty him not being willing. He now gets involved with a disposition that provides action. To back that willingness. That's why the book of Second Peter 3 9 puts it like this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He is not slack. God did not slack. He made a promise and backed it with action. That's the willingness. He didn't just say, I don't want anybody to perish. And then he sat down, wishing nobody perishes. But now he says, it is not my will that anybody should perish. Then he now backs that willingness with action. That's the disposition of God. He gave the promise and he backs that promise with action. He takes action to implement his willingness to save 
Somebody shout hallelujah. So it's not just a mere desire because he takes action. Notice John 3 16. Put it up for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He so loved the world. You can so love a woman but no action. You know the brothers that go around sisters. You know? They go around. Okay, they just go around. They just go around. They just go around. No gift, no talk. They just go around. And as they're busy going around, somebody else picks her up. Then he gets angry. Why did you follow him? Because between me and you, nothing. No action. Through different body languages, he has communicated, I love you. But no action to back it. That's not God. For God so loved. And because he so loved, he backed it with action. That he gave. He so loved that he gave. That's God's disposition to back up his willingness. And his disposition is towards everybody. For God so loved the world that whosoever, whosoever, not some people, whosoever. So the will of God is seen in his action. The will of God is expressed in his action. That's why when he came into the world, the prophecy said he shall save. He shall save his people. The scripture in the prophecy says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, meaning salvation. You shall call his name Jesus or Yeshua. That's why in the book of Hebrews, he now said, For if Joshua, which is Jesus, had given them rest, that means it was Joshua's responsibility to give them rest. Which by figure means that Joshua, just like it was Joshua's responsibility to give them rest, it is Jesus' responsibility to give you rest. Meaning, he does not need your contribution to give you rest. It is his sole responsibility. Now, in that is where you see the sovereignty of God. Hallelujah. Am I communicating? Please pay attention. Follow me carefully. So the sovereignty of God is as his regards his salvation plan. Verse 17 of John 3, 16. Read for me verse 17. For God sends not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That the world through him might be saved. Not just a desire. Something is done to back that desire in his action. So his sovereignty is revealed in his salvation plan. So let's go back to his sovereignty. We already defined sovereignty as one who is independent of control. One who is not influenced. When we say you are sovereign, what we mean is that you are independent of control and nobody influences you. That means a sovereign takes independent action. A sovereign takes independent action. It has nothing to do with a request. Because a sovereign cannot be influenced. It has nothing to do with a request. He takes independent action. So when Moses was saying, I see your cry, I hear your groaning. It was Moses that was seeing their cry and their groaning. It wasn't God. Because a sovereign is not controlled and is not influenced he does what he wants to do that's why he's sovereign teaching good follow me pay attention a sovereign does what he wants to do independent of control he is the i am independent that is why salvation is by grace 
salvation is by grace so that sovereignty that people have put on god you know he can do whatever he wants to do he can remove a governor he can put a president he can remove a senator that sovereignty people are putting on god there is something fundamentally wrong with that and we shall get there in a, in a moment the sovereignty of god is actually the grace of god the sovereignty of god so let's build up a case study here for you to be sovereign it means you will be independent of time for you to be sovereign it means you are independent of time so that's why genesis chapter 1 verse 1 didn't say then god came out of the earth genesis 1 1 didn't say then god came out of the earth but genesis 1 1 says in the beginning god created that means god was not part of the creation he was independent of the creation meaning he existed before the creation meaning it is because he was there before the creation that he could create are we here so he is independent of time because there was no time until creation took place before time he was the self-existing one the i am so for him to be sovereign he will be independent of time so god is before time in the beginning god created heaven and earth and man was created after god has created everything including time so when did god create time when he created the moon and the sun and the seasons because even in your village where they don't have wristwatch the way they can measure and they are accurate the villagers are very accurate they stand up and look at the sun and they use the sun to determine the shadow and by the shadow they can tell you the time because the, the moon and the star is used for measuring time so when the moon and the star was created that was when time came into action so man was created in time meaning god operated out of time and out of time he created time and regulates time because he is independent of time that's why when god heals your body it is not subject to medical timetable against all human formulas time is messed up when a miracle takes place are we together here i prophesy to the first one thousand of you whose amen will come like thunder time is suspended on your behalf what will take you 10 years is released in one week what will take you five weeks is released in two days if your amen is louder receive it by grace he is independent of time he operates out of time that's why he created it what you create you are bigger than you can't create something and the thing is controlling you hallelujah so it was time then man to be sovereign that's why the bible says in john chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 put it up for me in the beginning was the word yes and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all right so the same was in the beginning with god the word was god the word was god the word was god <laughs> next verse all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that he was made. operated out of time and from out of time made all things meaning that he is independent of whatever now happens he will not take action within time you didn't hear that he will not take action within time he will take action before time 
and that action will reflect in time he does not take action in time he will take action before time and that action reflects in time follow me carefully number two is knowledge we've dealt with time number two is knowledge when you say i am that i am i will be what i will be he doesn't get to know anyone that says i am what i am i will be what i will be he doesn't get to know he foreknows anybody that will say i am what i am i will be what i will be he doesn't get to know he foreknows he foreknows which we call omni science so we have seen yahweh in salvation don't forget we have seen yahweh in salvation so when you look at time pre-time pre-knowledge time pre-time pre-knowledge pre pre they are all attributes of that power to save yahweh is for salvation so when you look at time pre-time pre-knowledge they are attribute of that power of yahweh to save and they will all work together both time pre-time pre-knowledge in salvation are you in the house that means his pre-existence is for salvation that means his pre-existence is for salvation his foreknowledge is for salvation we will not examine foreknowledge today but within the week but notice something please pay attention foreknowledge is not an action when we say that god knows before the world began that certain things will happen that foreknowledge is not action foreknowledge means knowledge knowledge it doesn't mean action that foreknowledge is not action it means knowledge so let's examine foreknowledge are you are you ready are you here let's examine foreknowledge the word foreknowledge is the greek word proginosko proginosko it means to know before to know before then there's another word we shall look at very shortly it is the word for ordained now let's get back to foreknowledge or proginosko it was used a few times in new testament greek proginosko or foreknowledge was used a few times in new testament greek first peter chapter 1 verse 20 let's look at the usage of the word who verily was foreordained before the foundation of that the world. for ordained is not properly placed in the greek it is proginosco which means who verily was foreknown who verily foreknow before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you remember he will know before time okay he will take action before time that will reflect in time so watch this put that scripture back 
who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest where in these last times for you foreknowledge pre-action reflected where in time please follow me because i'm dealing with certain things that may not be obvious till i finish if a believer does not understand salvation i don't know what he is a believer for any christian that does not understand salvation one thing stands out is either he's not saved most probably because how can you understand what you don't have it's either he's not saved and that's the crux of the matter that's the crux of the matter yesterday i took time to share with you that a denomination is known by his knowledge of salvation what makes a denomination is not how many people are in the building it is what is the knowledge of that denomination when it comes to salvation that's what defines it that's what makes a denomination different from another how much of salvation do they understand when a man of god will say that when you get born again god uses pencil to write your name then whenever you miss it he uses cleaner to clean your name when you repent then that entire system needs to be closely examined it means they have not understood salvation from the founder down how can an eternal god produce a temporal product i mean think like a reasonable person how can an eternal god produce a temporal pencil to record to record the redemption that he the eternal god has provided for these people i mean i mean uh, 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 before time an action he took before time a knowledge he had before time that is supposed to reflect in time so this is not subject to time are we in the house please sit down because this is key this is very important this is very important and that man of god now said look the day is over we are men of god just talk and people collect it that day is over your color your chain your title is irrelevant the word of god is superior to every man of god forever oh god the word is settled in heaven if paul could rebuke peter you know who peter is paul stood up and rebuked peter to the face and peter submitted in apology what are you talking about paul himself said if any man preach any other thing to you, let him be because then he said if we he said even me that i have taught you if i come back to contradict what i have taught you let me be accursed that means the word of god has no respect of persons when it comes to doctrine my brother if you miss it i don't care how many years you've been preaching i will rebuke you if you miss it openly i will give you open rebuke if you miss it privately i'll give you private rebuke depending on the circumstances the color of your beers cannot scare me because one day you will be out of this world and the word of god remains he said judas's name was written with pencil that is why when judas collected 30 pieces of silver or silver is it piece of silver whatever it is that money he said they cleaned his name no he has not read his bible judas from the beginning was of the evil one judas was never born again the bible tells us he was of the evil one that is why continually jesus kept telling judas all of you here one of you is not clean one of you is not clean one of you will be because from the beginning judas did not submit himself to faith in christ he was only there for the money he was there for the money he was there for the money that is why the bible at the end say and satan entered him 
entered it. So he was never born. His name was never written. Talk more of pencil. Somebody said, but didn't Judas go with them and cast out demons? Judas went to them, casted out demons, healed the sick. He went out with them, did miracles. But of course, Jesus said, on that day, some of you will come and say, in your name, I raise the dead. In your name, I cleanse the lepers. And I will tell them, depart from me. I know me and you. We never met. So you were a worker of iniquity. So miracles don't validate salvation. Miracles don't validate salvation. Salvation is not a performance. Salvation is a message. You didn't hear now. Salvation is not a performance. Salvation is a message. When you hear the message of Christ, you be, it generates in you faith. And that faith delivers to you salvation. If I'm teaching, say I hear. All right. Some preachers say those things to keep members in perpetual bondage. Keep you under constant fear. And it's wickedness. So 1 Peter 1.20 talks about the foreknowledge of God. Romans 11.2 God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Which he foreknew. Which he foreknew. That is before what they did. He had a knowledge ahead of time. Okay, Romans chapter 8 verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. For whom he did foreknow, before time. Knowledge before time. It's also used for human beings. Foreknow is used for human beings. Acts 26 verse 5. Which knew me from the beginning. That knew me is prognosco. Which foreknew me from the beginning. Prognosco. He foreknew me from the beginning. So it's not action. It's just knowledge. It's not action. He foreknew. Meaning it is just knowledge. Okay. He foreknew. Meaning it is just knowledge. Second Peter three seventeen. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. You knew these things before, so when you hear foreknowledge, you have to look at it in context, in the light of what is being said. And don't ever get to a point when you hear about the foreknowledge of God and you place it out of context. Now, that's foreknowledge, prognosco. Let's look at foreordained. The word foreordained means what I did before is a pre-action. The Greek word is prorizo. 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 When it is used... For ordained. Look at where it is used. Acts 2.23. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Him being delivered. Delivered is the action. Him being delivered, put it back, by the determinate counsel. And that means he was delivered. It's an action before time. Prorizo. Proorizo. For those of you that are writing, it's P R O O R I Z O. Proorizo. Acts 4 28. For to do whatsoever they ha thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Before to be done. Determined before for ordained. First Corinthians 2 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Yes. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world. Which God ordained before the world. The wisdom which God ordained. Pro Orizo. Romans 8 29. For whom he did foreknow, 
He also did predestinate. He also born. did predestinate whom he did for no. He predestinate put it up read for me he predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son yes that he might be the firstborn among many brethren verse 30 moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and them he, he called. also called prorizo something you determine before ephesians 1 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by jesus christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will predestinated that is pro orizo ephesians 1 11. in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will pro orizo okay now let's get back to knowledge for knowledge there's another greek word for foreknowledge called pognosis a specific knowledge it's never used for a verb it's used for a noun it's closer to predestination first peter one to read it for me elect according to the foreknowledge of god the father elect according to the for your election is according to the foreknowledge pognosis so let's 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 deal with predestination very vital predestination now we have said it is not the will of god that any man should perish and we said it is a disposition seen in a series of action god's disposition seen in a series of action so let's go back to predestination any sovereign that cannot predetermine any sovereign that cannot predetermine it questions your sovereignty because you should be able to when you see the word foreknowledge predestination and election all of those words are actually an explanation of grace all of them predestination foreknowledge election they are all an explanation of grace so god's sovereignty is a description of grace in salvation the sovereignty of god is a description of grace in salvation let's look at the word predestination predestination now listen to me very carefully pay attention the way the way i and you as human beings will look at the word predestination is like this and of course there are even some theologians that see it this way you are born god planned that you should be born in uyo in his plan you are going to marry agnes in his plan you will go to university of lagos in his plan you will live in america for three months in that plan you will you will do some things in london that will bring you back to your village in his plan you will be the village head of your village and some things will happen You'll be given a political appointment as a commissioner and nobody can stop it because it is in the plan then in the plan from commissionership you'll be retired back to the village where you will die as a village head <laughs> so when we say predestination that is what comes to the mind of a layman and some theologians describe it like that now that is where all these assumptions come if god want me to marry you i must marry you whether you like me or you don't like me i must marry you because destiny has made it so are we here that's where all those kind of assumptions come from so in a few minutes what we're going to address is is there something like that or is there nothing like that but 
something is also wrong somewhere and what is wrong somewhere is in that school of thought you need to ask yourself so if i was to marry agnes and something happened to agnes i married josephine will the plan still continue because in that series of plans i have missed it think about it then the second thing is if god is really sovereign and that is how he planned predestination what overpowered god at that particular instance that god before time said i must marry agnes and his power could not make it happen that's why many people have problem with god god since you said it why couldn't it happen so they start questioning god and it is lack of knowledge when you understand what i'm teaching you will never ask questions again you will know you're here are you in the house should i close we continue tomorrow because you are extremely quiet oh he's sinking <laughs> oh, i thought you were tired oh i thought you were bored okay now that's the way we will look at the word predestination and some theologians explain it like that but we want to look at it properly from scripture because scripture is final authority so somebody asks me somewhere do you believe in predestination you know my answer no but before he asks me why i answer what well, i continue my answer but I believe in predestination in Christ. I don't believe in just predestination. I don't believe in it. But I believe in predestination where? In Christ. Now, I will explain what that means in a few minutes from scripture. Because scriptures are given to us for doctrine, true or false. Okay, given to us for what? For doctrine now please listen carefully if you do not understand predestination you will not understand foreknowledge if you do not understand foreknowledge you will not understand election because predestination foreknowledge and election is like a puzzle they must all fit in their place for you to have a clear picture of what we're saying so you must understand predestination understand foreknowledge to understand election you can't understand election if you don't understand predestination and foreknowledge and that's where many people have problem some people say well god knows those that will go to heaven there's no point struggling god already knows those of us that were born in hell and those of us that were born in, in i will be in heaven all those are an admission to illiteracy it's an acceptance of ignorance as a master deliberately not by force ignorance and here you say yes sir i submit because otherwise the scriptures are given to us to study so that when we study and catch a revelation of god in scripture the revelation of god answers every question you won't fail i say you won't fail now remember we're going to look at predestination grammatically to be able to help us a little but remember peter said to us when it comes to salvation we must trust brother paul is that what peter said <laughs> yes now peter said it he said even our beloved brother paul as it relates to salvation he has spoken things that even we apostles are finding it difficult to understand so when it comes to salvation matters we have to just stay with brother paul because he has a unique insight to that subject so brother paul will help us with predestination praise the lord i say praise the lord Hallelujah. now please listen carefully you must be particular about words 
you must be particular about words a word can change the meaning of a sentence just a word if i'm supposed to say pastor uko i am coming to your house by 12 noon and then i say pastor uko i was coming to your house by 12 noon that i am coming and that i was that am and was has made a difference in that sentence it has changed the entire meaning of that sentence now when i say i was to come to your house what i'm saying is don't expect me anymore but that's just a small word but it alters the sentence so that is why you must be particular about words people say dr damina is always particular about words. it's just semantics leave that thing it, it's not semantics when dealing with doctrinal issue words are vital because the entire revelation of god is committed to us in words called the bible so if all of god's revelation is committed to us in words written in a document called the bible then it means we understanding words is very important very important you must you can't afford to play with words you can't afford it that's why even songs i'm touching about songs because songs can alter the message that we know in our minds when you start singing he came from heaven to earth to show the way he didn't come to show the way he didn't come all other religions their prophets are trying to show the way jesus is not a prophet jesus is god who became a man jesus is deity in humanity jesus is immortality in mortality jesus is god himself he's not here to show the way he's here as the way he says i am not i have i am meaning the totality of jesus is the embodiment of the way what is the way access to god access to god no man can come to the father except that is i am the express access once you have me you have god once you have jesus you have god jesus said no man has ever seen god at any time then he now said but now you have seen him and you know him who is he he that has seen me has seen the father so jesus is god manifest did you hear what i just said who is jesus god manifest one more time who is jesus god manifest that's why his name shall be called emmanuel what is emmanuel god we are with us not 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 the child of god no god not god not child of god you know some of you when we say son of god you think son of god means peking of god or child of god no 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 bible is not an english book the original language that was used in writing the bible is very key it was not english the original language is greek and hebrew so you need some level of greek and hebrew for the meaning of what god intended to be communicated leave that in we are not using greek and hebrew to show you how intelligent we are it is a necessity that a teacher of the world must go to the original language to bring out flavors and shades of meaning for better understanding say i hear you i declare over you ignorance will not come near your house i didn't plan to charge tonight I should charge small, eh? <laughs> okay, I have charged small. We can continue. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say words. So if you're not particular about words and their meanings, then you are not particular about revelation. If you're not particular about words, it's like the song that says uh, let me come and bow down at your feet lord jesus no not that one in your presence 
I seek your face. I don't even remember it. Thank you. Down at your feet, oh God, is the most. How can the leg be the most high? Is he sitting upside down? He can't be sitting upside down, so his feet cannot be the most high. Then he now says, In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. What is his presence and what is his face? I can't be in him and be seeking his face. That's why we believers, we don't seek the face of God. We have the face of God. We don't seek his face. We have his face. We have him. He said, I will live in you. I will walk in you. I will be your God. You will be my sons and my daughters. So we don't seek his face. We have his face. Not just his face. We have all of him. We are in him. He is in us. We got to be particular about words. Because God's revelation is communicated in words. So words are critical. Words are important. Now look at that. Look at that Romans 8, 29 and 30 again. As I begin to round off for the night. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. For whom? Whom? That word whom is a variable in language. It means those. It means they. It means them whom those them they so the sovereignty of god includes from the analysis i just did for you it will include if that analysis is correct the explanation of destination that i did if it is correct then the sovereignty of god will include everything salvation and damnation that will mean that god is ultimately the source of all sin and the source of all suffering if the analysis i gave you is correct that will mean therefore that god is ultimately the source of all suffering and all sin since he has already set your life the way it should go. And you cannot alter it. Then what we mean is, in that our analysis, we have attributed all sin and all suffering to being God's making. So by yourself, you should begin to see that something is wrong with that analysis. Because there's no sin in God. Are you here? So that's why God gave us his word in a written form. As spirit filled people, we must study especially our salvation. So that's why the word predestination, therefore, since it means something someone does before time, it says a lot to us and we must study it. Now the word predestinate means prorizo. Pro means before. Orizo means to, to, to point or to determine. To appoint or to determine. Now because we are studying the grammatical definition of that word, I will borrow a word quickly to bring understanding. I'm going to borrow a cognate noun. It's not in the Bible, but I will borrow it and it will help us to explain prorizo. Since prorizo is a verb, a noun which is cognate, will help us in explaining it for example if i say i run running or a race race will mean speed effort legs in cognate noun that explains i run so a noun will explain that better for us it's like when i say god gave his son or for god so loved the world that he gave the word gave is a verb true or false the cognate noun of that word gave is the word grace because now grace tells us how he gave he gave freely 
and without condition. The verb says he gave. The noun describes, the cognate noun describes how that giving was done. It was free and without condition. Are we here? Alright, so for us to understand prorizo, we have to look for a cognate noun in the Greek. Because the Bible was written in Greek. So when the Greek people listen to you talk, they hear you talk their language. And in their language, they have an understanding of what you're communicating. So since Greek is not our original language, we've got to study to help us understand. Somebody say, I hear you. Now the cognate noun in the Greek for porizo is porismos. Porismos. It means, this is how it is explained. You have a child and you insisted that your child must read medicine. The moment the child is being conceived by the mother, before the child was even born, you made up your mind, the first child of my marriage must read medicine. Now the child is born. That is as prorismos is explained in the Greek. The child is born, but because you want the child to read medicine intentionally, you begin to create an enabling environment for that child to read medicine. You put him in the right institutions, you expose him to the right environment, you connect him to the right influences that will bring him to do to do medicine now that's all you did but in most cases the child can graduate with that degree as a doctor and not practice but you gave the child everything that will have made that child a doctor but you didn't determine the outcome you only set an enabling environment for that child to go in that way but by choice that child refused to give you the outcome of your intention that's the cognate noun of that word porizo prosmos in the greek So it means that prorizo is an intention expressed in your action. An intention expressed in your action. By sending you to school, set up everything for you. Which is connected to an, to an intention before you were sent to school. So take note, it's an intention, not a resolve. So, pros, pros, prosimos reveals prorizo. It reveals the intention that was backed by the setting up of certain actions to help you achieve that intent but that an environment was prepared doesn't mean that the person that had the intent and set up the environment determined the end result it is the person that is in this thing that will determine the outcome are you understanding that's the meaning of predestination that's the meaning of predestination so those words were never used for the result they were rather used for the intent and the subsequent actions that displays the intention amen i said amen so it will be injustice for anybody to use the word predestination to mean a predetermined end predestination does not mean a predetermined end rather it means that god expressed an intent and created an enabling environment for that intent to be achieved but the player in the case determines the outcome of what comes out of it now if you understand that see i hear you now that is exactly what happens at salvation you didn't hear what i said 
So that's why again, after he quoted John 3, 16, he says, for God so loved the world. Intent. Then he backed it up with action. That he gave his only begotten son. But now, he subjects all to whosoever. He gave the enabling environment. He expressed his intent, but left the outcome in your hand. Stand on your feet. Let me close this up. If you understood what I explained, say I hear you. Now that's the meaning of the word predestination in salvation. It doesn't mean that God determined the the outcome no but he made his intent known and he created an environment for that intent to be achieved but still allowed you to make the choice glory to god he did how he left you to make the choice that's why you can instead of marrying agnes you can marry josephine and life will still be good because it is not about josephine or agnes it is about the fact that you're married <laughs> i feel like i'm talking to somebody here am i talking to somebody here i decree in this building tonight whatever the devil has used before to mess up your mind is aborted right now it's aborted right now lift your right hand and say to me i receive all of god's blessings all of god's plan all of god's intent concerning my life i agree right now with the purpose of god for my life i am saved sanctified accepted justified forever i thought i would hear a powerful amen and i speak over this building anyone here with any form of disease any form of sickness whether you're watching my television or in the internet any form of disease or sickness oppression depression any form of satanic assault and every voice of doubt and fear in the name of jesus right now it is aborted i command that disease to melt out that sickness to melt out that disease expire that oppression be broken in the name of jesus he went about doing good and healing all healing all everyone under the sound of my voice that has a condition i declare all of you healed right now healed right now body be healed mind be healed body be healed mind be healed in the name of jesus and i speak over people here who are believing god for miracles this week financial miracles this is 30 days of glory i declare over this building every expectation is granted right now receive miracles i say receive miracles as your amen is coming like thunder time is suspended on your behalf time is suspended on your behalf in the name of jesus money come it to you now i thought somebody would shout money come it to me now say it five times one two go two three four five now receive financial miracles i say receive financial miracles I, 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 I say receive financial miracles the first miracle jesus performed was turning water to wine it was luxury related as your amen is coming like thunder that money you need to live a joyful life and to do the will of god in the lives of men receive it in the name of jesus receive favor receive favor divine connections miracle opportunities if your amen is louder it's coming beyond your explanation it is done it is done it is done can somebody shout that amen like thunder lift your right hand again and shout i am saved sanctified justified washed and accepted forever i thought your amen will come on a note of finality Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word today. Please don't adjust yourself and don't go away. Just stay with me patiently. You know the